Good morning, my family. You know, we were all once in a place of despair, a place of darkness, and the Lord came and he lifted you out of that and he gave you abundance of mercy, abundance of grace. And that's why we can have this moment in his presence. So as the song says this morning that we're going to sing, you know, how great is our God for doing that, for his mercy and for his grace. So give him thanks for that this morning. God bless you. From the darkness I called your name Into darkness your mercy came You called me out, lifted me up How great is your love You bore my weakness, you took my shame Buried my burdens in fields of grace Lord, you called me out Lifted me up How great is your love Hi everyone, this is Pastor Hannes Schmal from the Family of Love and Faith. And once again, it is such a great privilege to be there with you in your living room or wherever you're watching this message and to just share the Word of God with you. And I believe that you are at the right place at the right time and that God has a word for you today that is going to bless you and encourage you and strengthen you and help you to reach the destiny and the purpose that God has for you. So in saying that, the title of the message that I want to share with you today is called A Prosperous Perspective. Now, in starting this message, I want to first of all just show you this picture. Now, as you take a look at this picture on the screen right now, I want you to just notice something. When you look at this picture, what do you see? Well, you may say to me, I see an old lady. Or you might say to me, I see a young woman. Now you may say to me, but who's right? Well, what if I say to you that you are both right? You see, it doesn't matter whether you see a young woman or whether you see an elderly lady. It is actually just dependent on your perspective. You see, the picture has both pictures, but depending on your perspective, it determines what you see. And that's why I want to say to you today, I really believe that perspective is important. You see, we, we all live this, this, this thing called life, but we all have different perspectives and, and our perspective really is important. So just to understand perspective a little bit better, let me just give you a definition from the dictionary. And it says the following. It says the first definition, a definition of perspective is that it's a particular attitude towards something or someone. So your perception can actually be your attitude. You have a certain attitude towards something or someone. The second thing is, is that it is also a way of regarding something or someone. It's how you regard something. And then the last one, and I really like this one, it is your point of view. It is how you view things in life. Now, you know, you don't have to live very long to realize that every single person on this planet has their own point of view about things. And sometimes we can't see other people's point of view. And that's where a lot of conflict takes place. But anyway... This just reminds me as well of a a movie that I once watched called The Vantage Point. Now, in this movie, uh, there was an assassination attempt made on the President of the United States. 
Well, what happened then is, is that every character, they explored every character in the story and they showed the story from each character's perspective on how they viewed the events that took place and what happened with them. So we had the unique experience of actually seeing from every character's vantage point how they experienced the specific events. Now, once again, this just illustrates life perfectly to me as well. You see, we're all on the same journey of life. We all view a lot of the same things. We all experience a lot of the same things. But at the end of the day, it is our vantage point or our perspective or our point of view that determines what happens in our lives. And it actually also reminds me of a story in the Bible. You see, there was this story in the Bible where God told the Israelites to go and possess the promised land. So Moses sent 12 spies into the promised land. And from these 12 spies, 10 came back with a negative report. And only two came back with a positive report. You see, their perspective determined how they viewed the promised land. And how they viewed this assignment that God had given them. So their perspective of the 10 spies that went in and they came back with a negative report, the Bible actually tells us that as a result of their negative perspective, these 10 spies actually ended up wandering in the desert for 40 years and even dying in the desert. Okay, so their perspective really cost them. It cost them the opportunity to possess the promised land that God had given them. So I want to ask you today, what is your perspective? Is your perspective helping you or is your perspective stopping you from reaching the dreams, the goals and the plans that God has for you? So your perspective, your perspective can either make you or it can break you. Just like with these Israelites, your perspective can either make you or break you. And then I want to just just bring it down a little bit and just ask you, what is your perspective about prosperity? You know, there's. I talk to a lot of people and a lot of the people that I talk about have a negative perception or perspective rather about prosperity. When you talk to them about prosperity, then all of a sudden it's like they have this negative perspective about it. But you know what? God has a plan for prosperity and he wants us to possess the promised land that he has for us. So in saying that, let's just read the story in the Bible to help us to get the right perspective. And we're going to read from the book of Numbers, chapter 13. We're going to be reading from uh, the New International Version. And it just says the following. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe send its leaders. Then we read in verse 23. When they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs. Can you imagine that? They went into the promised land. The grapes were so heavy that two people had to carry one cluster of grapes. Verse 24 says, The place was called the Valley of Eskol. And then verse 26, They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Puran. There they reported to them in the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave to Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. So just like God had promised them, he said to them, this is a land that flows with milk and honey. And they brought back the fruit of this promised land. Then verse 27, they gave Moses this account. Verse 28, but the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and all the other sites. And the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. And then listen to Caleb's perspective, which I think is a very powerful perspective. He said, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. Doesn't that sound like a good perspective to have? We can certainly do it. But listen to the rest of the spies perspective but the men who had gone up with him said we can't attack those people they are stronger than we are we can't attack those people 
we spread among the Israelites, uh, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there were of great size. We saw the Nephilim there and the descendants of Anak, and we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Now, I want you to just listen to that statement once again. Now, they said, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. And I want us to focus on verse 33. It says that that was actually their perspective. They said that we seemed like grasshoppers in the eyes of the Amalekites. We seemed like uh, uh, grasshoppers in the eyes of the sons of Anak, the giants. You see, they had the perspective that they were grasshoppers. And according to them, that was even the same way that the giants viewed them. And I don't know if you ever see anything there with me, how they actually asked the giants how they viewed them. They never asked the giants for their opinion. But it's amazing to me how they knew exactly what the giants thought about them without even asking them. You see, the giants never said that they were grasshoppers. They saw themselves as grasshoppers and they decided that's how the giants viewed them. You see, their perception determined how... Sorry, their perspective determined how they viewed themselves. And they looked at the problem that was in front of them instead of looking at the promise. And because they looked at the, at the problem instead of the promise, they had the wrong perspective. And this is actually what I want to ask you this morning. Then. Are you problem minded or are you promise minded? So. And this is an important question, and we're going to just look at that this morning. So let's first of all look at the problem, the problem minded. OK, I'm not going to read all of that passage again, but once again, let's look at verse 33. It says, we saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak came from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. You see, this was the perspective that they had about themselves. They said these people are powerful. The city is fortified. The people are stronger than we are. The giants are in the land. And if you listen to them, it actually sounds like a bunch of good excuses. But what I've just come to realize is that the problem never really is the problem. It is often it is our perspective about the problem that is the real problem. You see, they first said that the people were the problem. You know, when they went into the land, the first thing that they saw was the people. And then they decided the people were the problem. They are the reason we can't possess the promised land. Then after that, they started looking around them and then they said, no, these cities are fortified. So now they said that the, the place becomes the problem. And, you know, often when we have excuses, it sounds pretty much the same. You know, we first all, all start off with the people. You know, it's the people in my life that is the problem. It's my kids fault. It's my boss's fault. It's my parents' fault. It's, you know, we blame the people in our lives and we actually, we see a people problem. Just pretty much the same like the Israelites did. Secondly, if we can't blame the people, then we start to blame the place. We start saying things like, you don't know where I'm from. You know, I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. Um, you know, you don't know my family history. You don't know where I come from. You don't know my, my situation. You see, it, it, it's that perspective that we have that influences how we see things. But I don't know if you've noticed something there, but you know how the Israelites started talking, first of all, about the, the place. Then they started talking about the people. And this actually led to, the, to them starting to see the situation as a giant problem. You know, all of a sudden they saw giants in the land. Isn't the same with us? You know how often we look at a problem and we look at the people in the problem and then we start blaming the people and then we start blaming the place where we're at and soon uh, it becomes a giant problem. You know, we, we say things like we have excuses like, you know, I can't do it. It is impossible. It becomes a giant of a problem. It's no one in my family has ever done it. And we come to the place where we rehearse the problem so much that it actually turns into a curse. And then that curse becomes an impossible giant in my life. We look at the people, we look at the place until the problem becomes so big that it seems impossible to overcome. 
And eventually, you know, what is amazing in the story that they actually came to the real root of the problem. And that is what I want us to see this this morning as well. You see, the problem is never really the people. The problem is never really the place. The problem is never even really the giants. But the problem was how they viewed themselves. It was their perspective about themselves. And we read about that in Numbers 13, 33. It says, we saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and so we looked to them. You see, their perspective about themselves stopped them from possessing the promised land. Now, I'm going to borrow something from T.D. Jakes, which I thought was very powerful. And he made this statement. He said that grasshoppers don't eat grapes. You see, the promised land was full of clusters of grape that were so big that it had to be carried by two men. But because of the perspective of these people, they couldn't see themselves uh, possessing that promised land. They only saw the problems instead of seeing the God that was with it. You see, to possess the promised land, we have to, first of all, we have to change our perspective that we have about ourselves. Once again, grasshoppers don't eat grapes. If you have a grasshopper mentality, if you have a grasshopper way of thinking, you will never possess the promised land. You see, your perspective is determined by what you focus on. Are you focused on the problem or are you focused on the promise? So I want us to now listen to the promise that God gave them. Numbers 13 verse 2, we read that the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. Okay, so you see there that God already gave them the promised land. It didn't matter whether they were giants. It didn't matter who was in the land. It didn't matter whether the cities were fortified. God gave them the land. Listen to how the Amplified says it. It says, send men to explore and scout out for yourselves the land of Canaan, which I give to the Israelites. God gave them the land. And all that they needed to do was to possess it. You see, God never told them to interview the giants. God never asked them for their opinions about themselves or how they thought the giants viewed them. He told them to go and explore what he had given them and report of what they saw in the promised land to the people. Once again, if we want to possess our promised land, we need to stop looking at the problems and we need to start focusing on the promise. You see, when God gives us a promise, he never tells us or asks us, to tell him why we can't have this promise. You see, you know, he never asks us to, to tell him all the possible reasons why we could fail. He's not even concerned about the giants of the land, the obstacles in our way, or even our own insecurities. Once again, for God, the problem is never the problem, but rather our perspective about the problem. You see, God is not concerned about what is standing in your way of possessing your promised land or why you think you're gone. He wants us to shift our focus from the problems to the promise. With the promise, and the reason why he wants us to do that is because with the promise comes the power. You see, his promise carries with it the power to accomplish whatever he commands us or tells us to do. And I know you know this very well-known verse, Philippians 4 verse 13, but I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Version because it says it so powerfully. It says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. And listen to this. I'm ready for anything and I'm equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. You see... We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. His strength is my power. When he gives me a promise, that promise is infused with his own strength, his very own strength. And the moment that I act on that promise, the power is released. You see, when we focus on the problem, when, when we say we can't, when we say it is impossible, um, we need to start changing our perspective and we have to just like the apostle paul say i'm ready for anything i'm equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me i can do all things through christ you see paul had every reason to complain 
He could use every excuse in the book, but instead of once again of focusing on the problem, he saw the promise. It is time we develop a different perspective, a different point of view about our lives and our circumstances. How do you develop this point of view? Well, to slay giants, we actually have to learn from giant slayers. And, and fortunately for us in the Bible, there's a very good example of a giant slayer from which we can learn how to develop the right perspective. So this giant slayer had a different point of view. And I guess you can already guess who this giant slayer is. Well, his name was David. And let's read about him from the book of 1 Samuel 17, verse, chapter, uh, verse 45 to 47. And it says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47, Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give it into our hands. Okay, so... Didn't David have an amazing perspective? Now, just to paint this picture in for you, you remember all of the Israelites were gathered in this valley and the giant Goliath came and he challenged all the people and he said to them, send me out your champion and I will fight against him. But if I defeat him, then the whole nation of Israel will be our slaves. And everyone in the land was afraid, including the king Saul was afraid to challenge this, this, this giant that was standing before them. You see, they had a perspective about themselves. They felt that this giant was too big and we are too small. This giant is powerful and we are weak. You see, their perspective about themselves stopped them from possessing the promise that God had for them. And then there came this young man called David, but he had a different perspective. He had a different perspective about himself. And let's just look at some of the points of view that that helped him develop this perspective in his life. And maybe it can help us to do the same thing. So that we can actually become giant slayers and that we can become possessors of our promised land. Would you like to do that? So let's just focus on these points. So the first point that I want just want us to want you to notice is that David didn't focus on himself. He focused on God in him. David didn't focus on himself, but he focused on God in him. Listen to this. He said, and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And verse 46, he said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. See, David didn't focus on his weaknesses. He didn't focus on his insecurities. He didn't even focus on the giant that was standing in front of him, but rather he was focusing on the God that was in him. You see, instead of focusing on himself, he focused on the God that was in him. And he said to him, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the name of Jehovah Sabaoth. And this is exactly what 1 John 4 verse 4 says. It says, you are of God, little children, have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Saying, do you realize who is in you? Child of God, do you realize who is in you? Do you realize that the giant slayer of all giant slayers lives inside of you? It doesn't matter the mountain. It doesn't matter the obstacles that is standing in your way. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And it is time that we realize that. It is time that we change our perspective and stop seeing ourselves as weak, insignificant, uh, insecure. And that we start seeing ourselves in Christ, in who God called us to be and made us to be. Do you know who lives in you, child of God? You see, David didn't focus on the giant in front of him, but he focused on the God within him. Then the second thing that David did is he didn't speak fear, but he spoke faith. He didn't speak fear. You know, when you read that story, you see how all these 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 soldiers, these 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 well 
oiled soldiers are afraid of this giant standing in front of them and they're talking about how big he is and how impossible the situation looks. But listen to what David said. David said to them, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. He didn't, he didn't complain about the giant in front of him, but he spoke words of faith. He said, this day God will. He knew. He had faith. You see, and that is faith. And we as children of God really need to stop saying what the world says. We need to stop saying that it can't be done. We need to stop saying that it is impossible. We need to stop saying that this is just our lot in life. And we need to start saying what God says can be done. Romans 10 verse 17 actually shares this principle with us. And it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. You see, what we hear on a consistent basis will either develop faith in our hearts or will develop fear in our hearts. You see, fear comes by hearing the words of the devil over and over. When you hear constantly over and over, I can't, I'm not good enough, I'm a failure, I'm worthless. When you hear these things on a consistent basis, fear will come into your heart and it will create a, a cycle of defeat in your life because you live by fear and not by faith. But what we need to do is, is that we need to meditate on the promise, not the problem. When you meditate on the promise, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. You will start hearing in your, in your spirit. You will hear, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. And the more you hear that, the more faith will rise in your heart. And the more you will hear it, the more faith will rise. And the more that faith will cause you to overcome every mountain that is standing in front of you. And what seems impossible will be possible because faith is in your heart. And when you hear God's promise, when you speak God's promise, you will see the promised land. And when you take possession of the promise, you know, then you can enter that place of rest. And that's the third thing that David did. He entered God's rest. You know, he didn't try to make the stone hit Goliath. He didn't think about how this is going to happen and how he had to have the right skills and the right talents to do this. What he did is, is he was obedient. He used what he had and he slung that stone and it hit the giant right between the eyes because he he developed, he entered into God's rest. He entered into the promise. He took the promise for himself. And this is what David actually said. He said, the battle is the Lord's. You see, when you possess the promise, the battle becomes the Lord's. When you possess the promise, when the promise becomes yours, the battle becomes the Lord's. You see, David believed who was in him. He believed the God that was in him. David declared who was with him, who was in him. David believed it and he declared it. And as a result, he possessed it. He possessed this promise that God gave him. In other words, God said it, he believed it, and he acted on it, and that settled it. You see, when you possess the promise, God fights for you. When you possess the promises of God, God fights for you. You no longer have to fight for the promise because the promise fights for you. And this is God at work. You see, when you rest, God works. When you rest in the promise of God, God starts to work in your life. You rest in the promise. And this is what I want to ask you this morning. Have you taken possession of the promises of God? So we see David did these three things. The first thing that he did was he didn't focus on himself, but he focused on the God that was in him. The second thing he did is he spoke faith and not fear. And the third thing he did is, is he entered into rest by taking possession of the promise that God had given him. So just like the Israelites today, in closing, I just want to say this to you. We stand at a crossroads in life. But what is your perspective? Are you seeing the problems in life or are you seeing the promises of God? Are you focused on the promises of God in your life or are you focused on the promise and the problems in your life? You see, your perspective will determine whether you are going to, in these last days, enter the promised land or not. Are you going to possess the promise or are you going to wander in the desert for 40 years? Like Joshua and Caleb, like David. 
We have to know who is in us. We have to know who is with us. We have to know who is for us. Like these men, these mighty men of God, we have to declare the promises of God. We have to speak faith and not fear. And we have to take possession of the promises of God by meditating on it until it becomes our own. And when that happens, what seemed impossible will no longer be impossible. And it will become possible. The impossible will become possible in our lives. And we will possess the promised lands that God has for us. Are you ready to possess your promised land? Are you ready to possess the prosperity that, ha- that God has for you? Are you ready to change your perspective and take into possession everything that God has for you? I hope this message blessed you. Have a great week. God bless you. Goodbye.